Summertime in America means traveling by automobile for vacation. When Americans first began traveling on American highways for vacation, you can nearly exactly date the time. The road trip had cemented its place in American society by 1950s. In the decades following World War II, automobile ownership nationwide continued to soar, and the nation's roads were also in much better shape. The three-point seat belt was invented in 1959 by a World War engineer who also greatly increased the safety of driving. American households' possession of the autos grew quickly in 1950s. The car, which was now a dependable method of transportation, was frequently utilized for both business and pleasure journeys. Due to the increased trend of taking road trips, various companies started offering services to tired passengers. Family road vacations were simpler because to more dependable cars and services, which also cut the time it took to cover the continent from months to days. The typical family may visit locations all throughout the North America in a week. In the 1950s and 1960s, the heart of the summertime family holidays was typically a road trip. To get a head start before breakfast, outings were typically beginning many hours before daybreak with car trunks packed. Everything that would be required for a two-week vacation was packed into every available square inch of the vehicle, including baggage, camping gear, an ice chest, and a tool kit. There were no tours or excursions planned for the first day of a road vacation. The goal was to cover around 600 miles so that the target could be reached the following day. State and federal highways did not circumvent, circle, or skirt towns and cities before then. They were linked. It always took a while to reach where you wanted to be, since the best average speed you could hope for on these cross-country journeys was around 50 miles per hour. Cars, for the most part, were neither air-conditioned nor technologically equipped, meaning no DVD players or Bluetooth or satellite radio. Thus, window seats were highly coveted and valued. The wind, provided at 65 miles per hour, kept the summer temperatures comfortable and the Wista was the finest sort of enjoyment. The window was also exhaust system to vent the cigarette smoke and a significant negotiating chip. It might be provided in an exchange. There was the Coleman Thermos with a twist-off cover that served as the drinking cup, and the picnic basket for lunch at the wayside parks. Roadside parks, if you're new, were lit up pull-ups on two-lane highways that contained a couple of concrete tables, a concrete fire pit and grill an odd drum type of garbage cans. A few resident flies may also be anticipated. These detours were expected, budgeted for, and counted on. They were a vital element of the U.S. highways in the pre enter state days. So commonplace and crucial, their positions were denoted by a little blue circle on the ubiquitous roadmaps distributed for free by major gas companies of the day. The creation and subsequent growth of the interstate highway system represented the biggest transportation of the American road trip. As highways were separated, longer distances could be covered more quickly and safely thanks to the interstate's higher speeds and limited access. Soon tourists from Australia, Europe and other nations flocked to the US to partake in the American ideas of road trip. Taking advantage of their vast country size and proximity to the U.S. travel spots, Canadians also went on road excursions. Every gas station had a rack full of maps. But through the 1930s and 1950s, the Gulf Tour Guide Service revolutionized travel. The Gulf Tour Guide Service advertised in the Rotarian, the Rotary Club's official publication, in the April 1935 issue offering its free service from Maine to Texas. Instead of punching an address into a GPS and hoping for the best, the Gulf Tour Guide Service featured specialists who gladly plan your trip for you with an alternate route for your return, suggesting points of interest to visit, accommodations and other helps to pleasant motoring. To the 1960s, the Gulf Tour Guide Service was still in operation and developed further. In this 1968 advertisement, the service bragged about its contracts with the Holiday Inn and Avis, both of which took the Gulf Gas Cardus payment. Based on my research, it's really tour guide, not tour guide. Use the restroom whenever it's open. 
whether or not you need to use it. This is some of the saddest advice you can receive. Someone always needs to use the toilet the moment you climb into your car and start driving. According to an old road trip cliche, while this is still true today, there are more restrooms available than there were in the past, when convenience stores and petrol stations were so widely distributed. Back then, if you didn't wait for a designated rest stop, you would simply run the danger of getting into an accident. One of the best road excursions in America is one along Route 66. For many years, Route 66 served as the principal route through the country and was referred to as the Mother Road and the principal street of America. A total of around 2,400 miles separates downtown Chicago, Illinois from Santa Monica, California along this historically significant route. One of the first roads in the United States was called the Mother Road. Highway system and it became a recognizable representation of the American tradition and cross-country travel. Route 66 was crowded with travelers during the Great Depression as they fled the dust ball affected southern plains in search of a better life in the West. As individuals traveled the shortest route between Chicago and Los Angeles to Santa Monica in search of a brighter future, Route 66 was a road of broken dreams, but it was also a road of optimism. This road was heavily utilized by soldiers and military vehicles during the World War II since it was the fastest route from Chicago to Los Angeles across the nation. From 1950s through the 1980s, families traveled along Route 66 for their summer vacations to see the Grand Canyon and other famous locations in California and Arizona as the Great Depression came to an end. The 1957 book on the road by the Jack Kerouac contributed to popularizing the idea of traveling via America's highways and back roads. Celebrities also contributed to the glamorous perception of the road trips. Picture here are Marilyn Monroe and her then-husband, writer Arthur Miller, together with their friend and photographer, Milton Green. The group was photographed in New York in 1956 as they prepared to travel to Connecticut in a Thunderbird convertible. They needed a place to stay as more Americans started traveling during their vacations. As a result, neon signs for motels and restaurants started to appear more often along the nation's roadways. A typical mom and pop hotel would have inexpensive accommodations, a somewhere to park for the night, and frequently a cafe providing comfort food. Central California's Big Sur is one of the most well-liked road trips in the nation. Having been made well-known by the Beat Generation in the 1950s and the Hippies in the 1960s, the most traveled section of the Highway 1, which runs between the Santa Barbara and Monetary, brings the travelers through this rocky coastline. Big Sur is well-known around the world for its natural splendor and comparatively untamed landscape. The top 35 tourist spots in the world are listed there. The longest and most picturesque stretch of the undeveloped coastline in the United States has been dubbed the Big Sur Coast. One of the most beautiful driving roads in the United States, if not worldwide, is thought to pass through the Big Sur on the Highway 1. Big Sur was named second among all the American locations in the TripAdvisor's 2008 Traveler's Choice Destination Awards due in part to the Vistas. The Big Sur region's extremely tight development regulations, which forbid billboards and other forms of advertising along the highway and require any business site to be modestly sized and of a rural type consistent with the Big Sur region, are largely responsible for the scenery's immaculate preservation. Do you also want to travel with beautiful sceneries? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the comment section below. This is life in the 1950s on a USA road trip. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to like, share and subscribe on this channel. We'll see you on the next video.